So let me ask you a question. Do you know what thing is common to most, maybe all, fallen leaders? These are leaders, both believers and non-believers. There's a characteristic that runs through most of those who are in leadership that fall. It's a, it's a rhetorical question, don't shout it out. The answer, in my opinion, is pride. Pride goeth before... Thank you. It's not quite the exact way the verse is written. Let me read it to you, but it's close. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, but I want to read verse 17 first. Proverbs 16, verse 17, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who watches his way preserves his life. Verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling or before a fall. God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. In your handout today, letter A, spiritual sobriety regarding the gifts of the Spirit in our lives. For, look at verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me, this is Paul talking, that grace he's talking about there is what he received as grace to become an apostle. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Amen. Now let me reread this to you as many modern TV preachers and many pastors today would teach. To everyone who is among you, oh, let me start from the beginning, verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. <laughs> Leave one word out, the word not. There's one guy that's on every channel all through the weekend. Drives me nuts. But I, I often listen to him. This pretty much describes often what he is saying. Wow, your best year yet is coming. Your best job yet is coming. You can be who you want to be. Don't let anybody get in your way. Think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. Well, he doesn't say that last part. I'm adding that to it. No, the little word not, you should always maybe underline that there in verse 3. I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, that's all of us, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. So I've known several pastors that have fallen because of financial sin, sexual sin, different kinds of things in their lives. Some of them make the headlines. Some of our political leaders have the same issues. At the heart of most of those who fall is an overinflated opinion of themselves. I can get away with it. It really doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect my ministry. Some of the ones who were at the highest of the pinnacle of their ministries. The one that comes to mind is Rabbi Zacharias. So many of us have been blessed with his writings and his teachings. And yet the moral failures of his life were very deep. Does it mean that all of what he taught was wrong? No, God can use a, a donkey, you know? I was in a ministry that later was discovered that the pastor 
was a practicing homosexual and yet he had healing lines and preaching and people falling over and getting saved. What about the people that got saved under that ministry? Because of his moral failure, are they no longer saved? No. no. Because we serve a risen Savior and even the rocks can cry out. Amen? Amen. And I know a lot of rocks that are better preachers than some preachers yeah. today. <laughs> see, I have to be careful of my own pride. Oh, speaking of my own pride. See, God has a big hat pin. You, you got to think on that for a minute. God has a big hat there. So I was preaching, at, I was invited to preach at a big ministry in Long Beach that was using the West Coast Theater. So I went there to, and I was preaching there. And since it's a big theater, the big stage, and they wanted to get the preacher closer to the audience, they built a stage out from the main stage that was part of the auditorium. So it's like, here's the main stage and there's this big platform. I thought, man, I'd arrived. Come on, Dana, don't laugh too hard. <laughs> I have arrived, man. And so I go there, almost a full house. Man, I am preaching my heart out, my best message, all my best illustrations all the stuff that wows you. And I'm in the middle of a great illustration. I step to the right into seven feet of error. Right off the stage. What are you laughing at? You were there. <laughs> oh, man. I must say I did recover. I jumped up and just kept on preaching right on the floor. <laughs> yeah. But talk about embarrassment, you know. And I thought later, you know, God, you kicked me off that stage. Man. Yeah. <laughs> God resists the crowd, man. Yeah. Uh, thank God that that was a small exposure to the depth of pride and depth of, depth of sin that most of us can get into. How would you like all of your sins broadcast on the screen back here if we dropped it down and just come Sunday morning and we just go row by row and photograph all of your sins? Wow. God desires, and Paul makes it clear, if we're going to operate in spiritual gifts, and remember verse 1 and 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your body as a living sacrifice. That means that what I do with my body is dedicated to God. Amen. And then verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And through that process, we prove what God's perfect will is for us. What follows in chapter 12 is much of what is God's perfect will for us. One thing is, he doesn't want us to walk in pride, to be haughty, to be self-serving. All of the, And the reason that he starts this section, when we get to spiritual gifts, you cannot operate in a spiritual gift if you're self-centered. If it's always me, 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 I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. From the movie, What About Bob? Some of you may have seen that. I need, I need. <laughs> you don't watch movies, I guess. <laughs> to operate with spiritual gifts, whether it's from this list or the one in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, to operate in spiritual gifts, you can't be self-centered. You can't be prideful because the purpose of the gift is to give it away. Not to receive. I don't come to church to receive. I come to church to give away. I go into the world to give away, not to receive. I receive everything from the cross. I receive everything from Jesus. He's given me all of the benefits already. There's nothing else to receive. But there's a lot to give away. 
Now Paul goes on, he gives a beautiful example of, in verse four and five of the, how we operate as a body. This is one of his main themes through all of his writing. I'm not gonna go into detail here because we'll do it later. Verse four, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Look at number two, letter B, our unity. No matter how many members a local congregation may have, whether 50 or 5,000, and no matter how many Christians exist worldwide in the invisible church, we are all one body because we have the same Savior and Lord. However, because we're one body doesn't mean we all have the same calling, the same gifts, the same abilities in the Spirit of God. That's what Paul's going to talk about here starting in verse 6, running through verse 8. Having then gifts. Now before I go on, I want to jump down to the little box on the right on your handout. Paul's use of the word gift in the Greek, charisma or pneumata. It's really important because Paul uses these words interchangeably often, and unless we keep them straight, we can really get confused. These two Greek words are both translated gift or gifts or spiritual gifts. Paul uses charisma as a blanket term for all spiritual gifts. He does this in Romans 12, 6, where we're at. Also, 1 Corinthians 12, 4. He uses pneumatica to refer to the inspired speech gifts such as prophecy and tongues. And sometimes people will call those the sign gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, those are the sign gifts, speaking in tongues, prophecy, uh, interpretation of tongues, spirit of discernment. They're all related internally to the spirit of God in operation. They're also related to, I believe, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Though Paul never mentions the baptism of the Spirit, those gifts, speaking in tongues, which was real prominent in the book of Acts, go back to Acts chapter 1 and the baptism of the Spirit. Even though there's not a direct connection through Paul's teaching, there is through the teaching of the Word of God. Actually, there's three areas of gifts. In Ephesians 4, there are gifts given to the church. I'm a gift to you. Apostles, uh, apostles, uh, teach. Te no, let me get the, let me get it right. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I think I got it. Fivefold ministry. Those are gifts, and the word gift in that passage is doma, D-O-M-A. Those are gifts like, I give you a Christmas present, that's a gift. Those are gifts that, on, upon Christ rising from the dead, he gave those as gifts to the church. Now, Paul talks about gifts here in this chapter, we're going to read about them in a moment. These are called grace gifts. And all of us have a grace gift, a primary gift. Some of us may have more than one. Then when we get to 1 Corinthians 12, those gifts of the Holy Spirit related to the baptism of the Spirit, anybody can have, have any of those gifts at any time. But I'm not going to explain that today. What I want you to see, starting in verse 6, having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Now, remember, Paul started in verse 3, through the grace given to me. He was given as an apostle, but he's also a teacher. Many things that Paul was, but whatever he was, it was by the grace of God. Verse 6, having these gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, 
He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. Give with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. If you notice on number three on your handout, I've listed these seven grace gifts. Prophecy, ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, mercy. Let's look at that for a moment. Prophecy, not the prophetic office, but the gift of pointing out. Speaking forth the word from God. Ministry, ministering, serving the needs of others. Teaching to lay out biblical truth in an orderly way so the teaching is understandable. Exhortation, paracleto from the paraclete, another name for the Holy Spirit. One who comes alongside of to give comfort. Giving, seeing the need, and giving of resources to meet it. Leading to stand in for, to lead, to rule in such a way that people follow the shepherd model. Verse uh, number, uh, <laughs> mercy, I'll get it right in a minute. The compassionate who discern hurt in others and know just the thing this they are doing. So let's. Let's say somebody walks in the service. Before we start preaching. They're a little disheveled. First time visitor. Let's see what the people with these gifts, how they respond to that person. Prophecy. The one who has a gift of prophecy might have a tendency to walk up to that person and say, get involved in a conversation, discover what's going on, and stick their finger in their face. You need to. That's the prophetic gift. Now, when I come into the church and I really need encouragement, I don't go to a prophet. Can I say that again? If I need encouragement and I come in on a Sunday morning, I don't seek out the prophets in the church. Because I, if I explain to them what's going on in my life, they stick their finger right in my nose. You have sin in your life. You need to do this. You need to do that. But prophets are needed in the body. What about ministry? So the person with the gift of ministry walks up to the person in need who comes in, he said, you know what? You look like you could use a ride home. Can I give you a ride home? That's ministry. There's another side to ministry and it's prayer. Can I pray for you? You look like you really need, need some prayer. What about teaching? So the one with the gift of teaching walks up to this person and says, you know what? Have you noticed from Galatians 5, 17, this really relates to your to your problem. Let's get the Bible out and we'll talk about it. You see now how these gifts that we may have determine the expression of what's going on. Exhortation. So the one who has the gift of exhortation comes alongside of this person and says, you know what? I'll go through this with you. Why don't you come home with me and we'll work on this. Deal. I'll go through it with you. The one who has the gift of giving walks up and says, you know what? Here's 20 bucks. I think you could use that to help you out. No, make it a hundred bucks. I know this will help you out. What about the gift of leading? The leader may come up and say, you know what? You need to be in church every Sunday and, and follow my example. Let's go and have coffee together. I want to tell you how I live my life. Somebody takes leadership or a mentoring relationship over somebody. And the last one, mercy, is the one I like the best. Uh, the person with the gift of mercy comes up, wraps his or her arm around this person and says, oh, you know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be, come on, let's sit down over here. Let's talk about it. Let me pray with you. And they pour out mercy upon them. 
Now, I'll never forget when I heard this illustration from Roy Blizzard. How many ever heard of Roy Blizzard before? Always a blast of the past. Not too many. I, during the early 80s, he had a Southern California teaching ministry, and he taught these gifts all around. And this was his classic way of illustrating it, having different, showing how different people would react in a different way. So as I read through the list and I read through the, in, through the examples, most of you will identify with one or two things. You identified with walking up and showing the word of God to them, or you identified with going up and having mercy on them, putting your arm around them and say, hey, it's going to be okay. I don't know how many of you went up or immediately thought, wow, yeah, that's me. I'll give them 50 bucks. Remember, this is all gifts of the Spirit under the operation of the Holy Spirit, but God has given you one of these things. Remember the parable of the talents? Yes. Jesus is going to go away. He gives one of his servants five talents, another three, and another one. While he was gone, the first one invested the five, came back, Jesus had ten or the landowner had 10. The one who invested three, invested, he, had, he had three more, he had six only. The last one who was given one, buried it in the, in the ground. Because he thought the, the, the landowner was a hard taskmaster. How does that relate to this? Believe it or not, there may be some people in this room or the sound of my voice, who see God as a hard taskmaster. He wants me to do too much. It's so hard. I, I, I can't do that. I can't teach. I can't show mercy. I don't have any money I can't give. I'm so inadequate. All, all, all of the things I know, Jesus, that you're demanding of me a lot and I can't live up to it. Let's all agree, none of us can live up to it. Amen? None of us can, apart from the power and the outflow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. But the person that comes in the room, and you may be that person. Many of you came in today needing some of these gifts. Think about it for a moment. Some of you came in today, you needed to, you need somebody in your life to come up to you and stick their finger in your face and give you a prophetic word. I won't tell you who you are. Some of you just need somebody to come up and pray for you. Some of you need somebody to open up the word and say, hey, the word says this here, this, this applies to your life. Some of you need the comfort of somebody coming up and saying, I understand what you're going through. I, understand, I, I know what you're going through. I've either been through it or I know people have been through it. I have compassion. I have mercy. I want to I wanna minister in you to you in your life. That's the way it should be in the body of Christ every Sunday when we come here, whatever our need is, it's met. It's not met from the pulpit here, except to the extent of the teaching part of it. But we all need more than teaching. We need some compassion. Amen. Who needs some compassion? Amen. Well, I got a few brave hands. <laughs> Who needs some giving? Now you don't know about that one. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Who needs some money? Who needs to give some money away? Oh, you're a hard group this morning. <laughs> you are a hard group this morning. I love this passage because it teaches us that we cannot live without one another. Amen. 
I need your gifts. A few weeks ago at the end of the service, uh, Brother Al came up. And, and others of you have done this over the years, but Brother Al came up at the end of the service. Nobody knew it. I, I'd had a miserable week, struggled with, you know, when you stand up to speak, if you can relate to this, you're, you have the, the burden of sharing the word of God to people. Sometimes that can be overwhelming because if I get in the way, I get in the way of God's word. If I tell too many stories about myself, you'll remember those stories, but you won't remember the word. Hey, it's a fine tightrope. So I had a difficult time that week. The end of the service, I usually at the end of a message, I have a sense, yeah, they got it. No, they didn't get it. I missed it. Uh, help me, God. <laughs> you know, go through that. So Brother Al came, came up and he just walked up and put his hand on my shoulder and started praying for me. That was a blessing. He didn't, he didn't know what I, that I needed that. But many of you have done that, you know, after 30 years of it, quite a few people from time to time do that. Some of you can sense that and you're not afraid to approach the pastor. I've had others in the congregation and at least two of you are in the congregation now who have come to me with that prophetic kind of gift and said, Pastor, I don't think you're right. They didn't literally stick their finger in my nose, but they disagreed with me. I need to receive the ministry of that prophetic word to keep me on the path. So do you. Amen. This is how it works together in the body of Christ. We need those to weep with those who are weeping, have joy with those who have joy. I can't tell you how many times over the years in the body of Christ, when we've been really low on funds, we come home, there's groceries at the door. We've been blessed since we've been in this ministry, and yet there's times we've had need, and all of a sudden, somebody in the congregation or the, meets that need unexpectedly. In amazing ways. See, God knows me like he knows you. He knows your need, and sometimes he wants to use somebody in the church to help meet that need. And we say, oh God, how come you're not really doing this for me and you're not doing that for me? He said, I'm trying to tell that congregation down there to wake up to what your needs are and meet them. It's the congregation's fault. Don't blame it on me. But see, that's how God put the body together. We're all part of Jesus is the head, some of your hands, some of your feet, some of your mouth. I won't tell you which ones. You already know that. <laughs> Heard one pastor say, I have a church of all mouths and no ears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Help us, God, through it all. You're an integral part of the body of Christ. Each of us are. Father, thank you for your truth and your word. I pray that you would put on our hearts this morning, all of us, that you have given us gifts that we might give to others. We are gifted people for the purpose of gifting others. Through the gifts you've given us, they're not for us. It's not a present that I open and celebrate. It's a present that I give to others. Give us eyes to see with the Holy Spirit. And then give the gift away that you've given to us. Make us strong in the body of Christ today. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's stand together.